WCB Podcast, your source for all things Chicago Blackhawks and everything hockey, with your host, Let's do it. Jerem and Tanner. All right. It's another edition of the WCB Podcast. It's Jerem. It's Tanner. What's up, bud? Nothing, man. Just, you know, hanging out. Getting one step closer every day. It is 50 days until the Blackhawks open their season. When this is recording, and depending on when you're listening to it, it could be 49, it could be 48, it could be 47. Who knows? Numbers go down when you get closer to the date. Um, Ironically enough, taking a week off, there is still not to talk a, a lot to talk about when it comes to the Hawks. Uh, some more stuff come out through the NHL, though. Um, mm-hmm. Thank God teams are trying to make news for no reason, including offer sheets, hey. uh, new captain, and a trade for a player that has been wanting to be traded. And I don't know why I did like the, the drum roll there, but okay. Uh, and then we're going to continue our favorite player series with left-handed defensemen. Again, it is our favorite players. Fuck your reasoning. Fuck your stats. <laughs> it's, it's what we like, not you. Fives only. <laughs> uh, but let's get into Hawks talk. Uh, the Probably the most recent thing that has really taken over Hawks news right now is that the, the leak of the Blackhawks Winter Classic jersey. Um, I said it's again on top of it, like usual. He's always getting these first hand looks and getting information before everybody else. So, usually, if you see him post it, it's probably legit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the Hawks are finally going with the red winter classic. I will post the jersey somewhere if you're watching right now onto the screen just so you can see it. Um, what was your initial thoughts? I like it. I think it's really cool. Like the, it's, I'm just now like looking at it further and just kind of like, it's interesting that it says Blackhawks Chicago. Oh, now you pointed that out and I was going <laughs> to bug out of me. Um, I do, I do like the, um, the close up views of it though, too, where each letter is like its own piece. And yeah, like, a little stitched stick. on. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a nice mix of the original Winter Classic jersey the last mm-hmm. time. You know, it's going red instead. Yeah. The thing that, that really bugs me about it is the main logo. With, like, the the new... The, the modern... The Hawks modern yeah, Hawks. Modern Hawks. Yeah. Well, like, I think, I mean, at this point, kind of, like, run out of things to do when it comes to, like, Winter Classic stuff and, like, Stadium yeah. Series and... Now you kind of got to like blend new with old and, you know, create something completely different, but still feels familiar. Yeah, but I don't know. I just think for the theme of it and it's like how often, how how many times have they used like the, the vintage Hawk logo? Like, I don't know, for this specific game, for what this like, it's supposed to be the vintage feel, old school feel. Like, it just seems kind of weird that they all of a sudden decided to not use it unless it's um, trying to play very careful and not, you know, try to stay PC as much as possible. So people don't get pissed off. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. They should have um, gone with the old spelling of it, like with the space space. between. Yeah. That'd be cool. I do like to, I like the incorporation of the Chicago stars. Yeah. Um, Much better than the, the one, what was it? The, was it Washington or maybe no, that was a, was that a on, series? That was a stadium series. No, yeah. no, Washington was it? Was a Winter Classic? No, I know. I meant like I was trying to think if it was the Washington Winter Classic oh. or was a stadium series game that did that. Where it was, that was against the collar? Yeah, that was against Minnesota, right? I don't remember, man. There's two. Um, but yeah, I mean, my biggest fear going into this was fanatics. You know, we all know their their boring ass designs, like. Mm going to clip art and, and paint Microsoft paint and just throwing stuff together. Like we saw the the Stanley cup shirts and hats that they were selling for an arm and a leg. And yeah. I'm glad that they, it looks like they did take some time to actually put some effort into this and, and just not throw together a basic ass Jersey. Yeah. It looks good. Um, 
I don't know if I'll get one still because I don't know if it's going to be worth it. Yeah. If it's not like, you know, authentic, like how the replicas will look or anything. And then the authentics are what, $500? No, that's like the on game one. So there's like three or four tiers now. There's the on ice version, there's the authentic version which is similar but it's not it's still not quite this, like what the players use then there's the replica and then there's like the the cheap ass ones like mm. it's it's so crazy but yeah i don't know nice i song. like it i like the way it looks though yeah it's definitely a big jump in the right direction from the the reverse retro jerseys i know the reverse retros eventually kind of grew on us a little bit but Still, this one is much better than those. Yeah. Yes. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see it on ice at Wrigley. I'm curious what St. Louis is going to be and when those are going to get leaked. Yeah. Well, they're going to probably be whites, right? Unless, what be. do you think? I mean, you, you, think do they, you think they they could blue? They could go blue. Which it can go yellow. But it'd be really funny if they do go blue. So then you have the Blackhawks. They're playing in Wrigley Field. The Blackhawks have Cardinals red, and mm-hmm. St. Louis has got Chicago Cubs blue, Cubby blue. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a good mashup. But yeah, you know what's been really cool since it was at Wrigley, and since it's kind of like a newer jersey. If instead of just like red, you went with like bricks <laughs> for like the brick, like the wall at Wrigley. Or ivy, like yeah. Or put some thing. ivy on like the sh- on the jersey, just be like, it's more themed towards like the venue rather than like the history of the team. Dude, it would have been, it, it would have been cool if they did the Chicago flag jersey we've been talking about. Dude, I wish they would just give this a Chicago flag Hawks specialty jersey. Oh my god! Like, can they you already imagine? have like some merchandise that's like the Chicago colors? It just looks so good. I don't know if people buy it. I know we buy that shit up. Like I yeah. think I have like three or four hats with yeah. the Chicago flag color style way. But yeah, it's such a cool, like cool colors. I mean, obviously we use it for our designs and stuff. You know, we're ahead mm-hmm. of the game, you know. Come on, get with it, NHL. Get with it. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, all right, other Hawks news. The lead prospects uh released out released their top 100 prospects uh going into this season. And this is only players eligible for the Calder Trophy this upcoming season. So and it's, but it's not including goalies. Not including goalies, correct. And so that means Bedar did not have an amazing fall off. He won the trophy. He's not eligible for it again. So he would still be number one on this list if it was just an age range, I'm sure. But the cool news is. The Hawks had seven players on this list. The, the even cooler news to that is they had three in the top 20. Yeah. The Hawks and San Jose are the only teams that had three in the top 20, I think. That's pretty fucking good. Yeah. It's almost like KD knows what he's doing and building this team for the future. Yeah, man, I'm just I'm just trying to like analyze it like further to see if there's any other teams. But yeah, man, San Jose having one, ten, and fifteen, and the Hawks having six, sixteen, and nineteen. So number six was Leshinov. He obviously wasn't ranked last year, so he uh, made a big jump on the list. Frank Nazar, number sixteen, he came in at sixteen last year as well. And Oliver Moore is at nineteen. He dropped two spots from seventeen, which I mean that's. I mean, I think it's obvious when you're when he's still playing college hockey and you got players like Celebrini coming into the league and stuff like that. Like you're gonna Yeah, and I mean the kids that got ranked above him were drafted this year, like top ten. Berkeley Catton and Beckett Seneke. Yeah. Um and damn, dude, twenty one is another San Jose guy and Sam Dickinson. Holy dude, shit. San Jose. Yeah, but like you look at that too, and you're like, wow, San Jose, like they have a lot of like good prospects but it's like we have like Korchinski who's not eligible on this list and Bedard who's not eligible on this list too that would yeah. easily be like top 10 in this list oh I'm not trying to say that, like the Hawks oh, yeah. no no yeah, no. I'm, no. Saying, like, I'm, it's I'm so... saying it's yeah. impressive for San Jose but like none of these guys have had significant NHL time where 
like we have guys that have had significant NHL time, but are still like of the same age range as these guys. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I was just saying like, holy shit. San Jose is going to be like, it's, it's going to be crazy. Be the power, the yeah. power swing that's going to yeah. happen. I think like, I think there's going to be more parity across this league going forward where it's like, yeah, you're still going to have bad teams, but I think it's going to get a lot closer. Yeah. In, in terms of skill in in players, I mean, although that could not that could be false when you think about it, the salary cap starts going up a shit ton. Yeah. But anyway, but I think that you're gonna see the Ducks, the Sharks, uh, Utah. I mean, these teams that typically weren't big spenders or or struggling for a while are gonna be turning a leaf and are going to you know really come out on top as like teams to take serious in the playoff hunt. Might not be this year, might not be next year, but it's coming, and don't be surprised when it happens. I mean, like at yeah, this time, like ten years ago, you had Edmonton and Florida near the bottom of the league, and yeah. now you just you just have them now consistently being like playoff like contenders and pushing for cups. Let's... But that's something that easily can happen for the Hawks within the next like three or four years. So 2023, 2024, or sorry, 2013-2014. So the bottom teams were Buffalo, Florida, Edmonton, the Flames, Islanders, Canucks, Hurricanes, Toronto. And so those are all all of those are pretty much top teams except for like Buffalo. Yeah. Calgary debatable. Uh, Calgary had a steep drop off because of you know Oops. not being able to like hold on to some players and like others not performing. But yeah, so I mean it's gonna be it's a fun time to be a fucking hockey fan right now. Like it's gonna be mm-hmm. so good, and especially we've talked about it multiple times with how good these kids are getting nowadays. Yeah, and and it's just Bedard, okay, Celebrini is probably a better player to say. Like, I know we've said it's like, oh my God, Bedard. And it's like, Celebrini is just up there, but he's not quite up there as Bedard, I don't think. But I mean, he's still, it's like, holy shit. But Celebrini might start becoming the norm, you know? Like, top mm-hmm. three guys are going to be Celebrini level. Yeah. That's what's fucking insane. Yeah. The, it, it's crazy, too, how every, every year there's, or pretty much almost every year, there's like a clear cut number one. And like you're like, oh, how does that happen all the time? Like it, it's been a minute since we've had like a year where like somebody's not like so clear cut. I guess like Lafreniere was still clear cut number one. I think he's just been in a shit situation in in New York. He got screwed by COVID, man. I think yeah. that was like a, that's a it's, but he it's, had a good year last year. Yeah, it's finally clicking for him. But it's like he it's well, like he got he the was, ice time finally. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking. Other than that, like either the either some guys are too young and still like looking to make an impact. Like I feel like Owen Power still has a lot of potential to be like oh, obviously should have been the number one pick, which he was. Um, but yeah, that, that draft's still really young. Uh other than that, man, like I feel like everybody maybe Nico Hiche, like everybody thought Nolan Patrick was gonna be number could be number yeah. one. Like that was the one that was like the most contested between like the top two. But that every every one has like a a clear cut number one. Other than that, yeah. And then you you think Shane Wright year after year he oh he, yeah that's right he, that's he right. was he, I mean he was clear cut he was supposed to be and then yeah. everybody was like he's kind of not doing anything he's not trying yeah. so that might that might be the closest one to it but uh, the other Hawks that finish on that that prospect list uh, sixty five you got Sasha. Um, Sacha, Sacha, uh, 69 was uh, he was at 65. Del Mastro's at 69. He drops down one spot from 68. Sam <laughs> Renzel, 71, and he was honorable mention in 88. I will let you pronounce it because I have Merrick never... Vanacker. There you go. I've never been able to say it right once. Um, and obviously, yeah, he was not ranked yesterday, not ranked last year either. Um, well, because yeah, he was just drafted. Yeah, so the future is looking fucking bright, and even like just that many guys on the list, it's like 
if half of them hit, this team is in great. Shit, yeah. If, if three of them hit, the Hawks are in a great position. I mean, the three are likely to hit, right? Yeah. They're top 20. That's going to be sick once they make the jump. I mean, Nazar is already made the, is going to make the jump, I think. I think he's going to end up being with the team the whole year. If he can start hot, like, I feel like he'll just stay hot and be. Oh, so fucking good. (laughs) (laughs) Let's let let's let him start in Rockford, play the game against the Wolves in Chicago, and then he can get called up. Let us see him for cheap first. Dude, can you imagine like Flashinoff just like fucking tears it up and they're like, well, I guess we should just bring him up. (laughs) Burn his contract regardless. So what 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 do you have to lose? Yeah. It's crazy. So crazy. Speaking of Nazar. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings posted some video of Patrick Kane training in the summer. And so obviously Kane still spends a lot of time in Chicago. So he was at fifth third skating and Frank Nazar was, uh, was with him and uh-huh. just having a good time. And it makes you, you really punch air at what could have been. Yeah, man. Just Patty Kane, baby. He's a monster. He's awesome. I hate that watching that clip. I'm like, damn it. I'm going to be watching a lot more Detroit games. I mean, I'm just going to pay attention to how they do. That's about it. I mean, Detroit's getting interesting, but it's like, I got a picture of the Detroit logo just as like Patrick Kane's face with the wheels, like as the mullet or something. Like, the just, mullet, yeah. yeah, just, I can't. I'm I thinking know. about cutting my hair into the Kane or mullet for the start of the year. Do it. That's all I want to do. I keep telling my wife all the time. I'm like, I'm going to cut my, I'm going to cut my hair into a mullet. She's like, all right. Like, I'm gonna do it. She's like, okay. She's like, all right, this is what's gonna happen. I'm I am letting you know multiple times so that when it happens, you cannot be upset. <laughs> oh man, we are desperately needing a hockey to come back. I can't wait. It's gonna be fucking great. Yeah, I was about to say we should start figuring out our preseason like preview episodes, but we still have a freaking month before we really even have to start thinking about that. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's still moves to be made, right? Not supposed to be made, and there are moves. Transition. Being, yeah, moves. Are we, being do, we, do, we have any more, do we have any more Hawk stuff? No, I got nothing. Okay, so transition moves being made. Teams making moves. So we'll start with. The, you want to start with the new stuff? You want to start with the old stuff? I don't know. Whatever you want to start, I don't know which is which. <laughs> we got the stuff that happened last week, or the stuff that yeah. happened today. Well, let's do the last week stuff. Last week. All right. So St. Louis woke up and chose violence one day and put out two offer sheets. Well, no. Backtrack. The day started for St. Louis trading random draft picks with Pittsburgh in the middle of freaking August. And everybody's like, what is that? And To get get their own draft picks back. Yes. So they essentially traded for Kevin. The pick they traded for Kevin or to get to get rid of Kevin Hayes came back to them so they can go and do some offer sheets. Um, I should have pulled off the offer sheets. Do you have them? Uh, yeah, it's right here. So Dylan Holloway for two years at a total of 4.580914. It's such a weird number. So cap hit of 2.290457. And then Philip Broberg, two years uh, and oh, a little over nine million. So the cap hit is actually four point five eight zero nine one seven. It's very odd the numbers that they chose. So yeah. Holy shit! Sorry, I'm like ahead of this now because I was just was pulling up Spuckpedia and they did a tweet about the Edmonton Oilers and goddamn Stan Bowman is cooking. Oh really? Yeah. After their trades that they've done to like try to make cap space for this. Yeah. For the 2025 draft, they have two draft picks. Edmonton? Yes. Can you oh. guess which picks? Uh, first and seven. You are 50% right. First and six? You are 50% right again. First and fifth? No. What is it? Six and seven. Oh, six and seven. <laughs> That's fucking good. That's all they have. It's all they have. Oh my god! So they might just want to let these guys go so they get the draft picks. Yeah, maybe they have one day to make a decision. Dude, I love that the St. Louis Twitter account just tweeted out 
The Edmonton Oilers have one day to match the contracts. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> it was it. Dude, they should have like put out like um like a meme of like Majora's mask, like one day remaining. <laughs> like <laughs> Like I, I love this the chaos, but I also hate it because even though he's not in our fucking uh, working for our team anymore, we still end up talking about goddamn Stan Bowman. He's just you know he he gets <laughs> gets people talking all the time. God. But yeah, so Edmonton traded Cody CC and a what was a third round pick. Yeah, second. Third round. No, a third, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. to think about Ed- different trades. To San Jose to try to clear up some space. And right now, according to Puckpedia. Never mind, going to cap wages. It's... What? What are you trying to figure out? Cap wages. Uh Edmonton Oilers currently have ne- negative it's almost six million in cap space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they got like one point, just under two million in cap space. Oh, is that with uh, Evander Kane on LTIR? It's gotta be. I love that this is gonna happen to Stan. I fucking love this. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the welcome back. What does it say here? Cap space. Three hundred and forty-one thousand. That's what I see for Edmonton. Were that's without. At- that's without Evander on LTIR. Are you on Puckpedia or? I'm on cap wages for this one. Interesting. Oh, this one still has Cody CC though on their team. Yeah, wow. mine. Mine doesn't. That's weird. What the fuck? It shows like on like on the main page that like they traded CC away, but when I clicked on the Oilers, it said that they still had CC. Okay, now he's not there. What the what is happening? Okay, yeah, one point nine five eight in cap space. So yeah, if they put Vander Kane on LTIR, then they have enough space for Broberg and Holloway. Uh, but they would it's something like they would need to also put someone in the minors too and carry like one fewer guy than, than you can have on the team. Dude, this is fucking Chicago Blackhawks all over again. Stan Bowman gets handed the keys to a blueprint. Hey, this is set up to win for a while. This is a Ferrari run please with it. Please don't turn it into a, Fucking smart car. <laughs> he has it, and he is already going to fuck this up. Now I cannot wait to see what fuck ha- the fuck happens with Leon Dreisaitl and all that. Oh, but yeah, dude. Like, everything is so screwed now. He's going to price himself out of Connor McDavid by giving Leon Dreisaitl too much. And it's I can't wait for it to happen. It's going to be great. Leon Dreisaitl, you are a Chicago Blackhawk. So St. Louis... Traded with Pittsburgh, what was it? A second and a third to get their second and a fifth back. Yeah. That's so funny. Just to make that move. That's fun. That's good stuff. Um, was there anything else on that whole front? Because I, no. I can't wait to see if they just end up like not even matching those deals anyway. It'd be hilarious. Yeah, tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow. So by the time this is posted, we'll we'll hear about that. Um, we'll know. Clearing um, out the shelves for twenty twenty five to just retain two guys. That's so funny. That's hilarious. Um, mm-hmm. Trey that did happen today. Uh, Patrick Line dealt it to Montreal. Well, I was gonna say you don't skip the Pittsburgh in Nashville trade, Cody Glass move, oh, moving over God, to Pittsburgh. I about that one already. Yeah. It was a, you know, it's one of those things where you're just getting somebody into new scenery again. 
And what was the social media thing where a guy tweeted about Cody Glass being like a terrible player? He's just like, he like, and he responded, yeah, 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 and he responds saying like, "Hey man, give me a chance." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jesus so guys, funny. give me a chance. Oh jeez, I haven't done anything yet. Give me a chance. So I mean, that I, was that was a cat move, right? It wasn't like, was it a cat move? I don't know. Yeah. Was it? They have more cap space now, so yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they kind of like gave up a bunch because they gave up a third and a sixth, and like for them to take Cody Glass for a guy that hasn't played in the NHL yet, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, he was undrafted. So, yeah, hopefully, I mean, uh, hopefully something clicks with him, man. I mean, I feel like he's a he's got potential to be a great player. He just. It just hasn't. So it just hasn't worked out for him yet. Yeah, I, it's. I think with the Predators also bringing in like who they brought in, like he was going to get even less of a chance um, to make an impact. So, I get to go a team a team like Pittsburgh is going to you know, it's going to be probably better for him because he'll get the opportunity to play with like some really great players. He's a cheap option for them to like if he plays really well could really outplay like the salary that he has and you know him getting the opportunity to play with possibly Crosby or Malkin even just like Brian Rust like dude it's so weird that Kevin Hayes is on there too we were just talking about that <laughs> dude, dude, Pittsburgh is such an odd team to look at their their roster so it's weird it's the Dubas team for sure Kyle Dubas team for sure I mean, he's he's doing what he can. He's making he's making it work with what he's got. <laughs> that team is it's a team. It's a team. They, they play hockey. Uh, but yeah, the Patrick Lyon trade went down today after a few weeks of you know where will he get dealt? When will he get dealt? Uh, ends up going to Montreal with along with the second round pick for 2026 for Jordan Harris. Who you were saying was what a 2018 first rounder? Third, round, third rounder. Third rounder. Shit. Give me one yeah. credit. Um, no salary retained either in this trade. Yeah. No, that I think that was the big reason why um they only got Jordan Harrison and also gave up a second was because they got out of the contract completely. Yeah, I mean, that's a big contract they got out of too, which that's gonna help them out. How many the you, oh he's only got two years left though? Like that what is that really but it's 7.3 million. Yeah. For somebody who doesn't want to be there and well the it, the blue jackets have 18 million in cap space. Is that still with line A? That's without him. Live 13 million. What are you looking at? I'm on Puckpedia now. <laughs> well, now you're on Puckpedia. Okay, I'm on cap wage again. It says 13. Dude, I don't know. Why aren't they the same? Here, come back. <laughs> Cat friendly, make it make it or make yeah. sense. Yeah, Jesus. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think this is going to be the worst. I. Uh, I don't know, man. I. I think Noli in our group chat said it best. Like he needs to go to a small market team where he can just be. Oh yeah. Like like, the team itself, like Montreal, I think is a good team. And like him going to that team is good. The atmosphere of Montreal, I think, it could be the worst place for him to go. Especially assuming, like, nobody knows what he was in the the assistance program for, but you have to imagine something with mental health and all that kind of stuff. And you're gonna go from that to one of one of the more hostile like media and fan bases. Who literally were calling for the head of the kid they drafted? What was it two years ago over Mitchkoff? Oh yeah, not even not even the fact that they drafted a, a kid that wanted to be pulled out of the draft. Like they didn't get pissed about that. They got pissed about drafting Reinbacher. Reinbacher, that's what it was. Yeah, like the their their fans are psychopaths. Dude, the, oh. If this team wasn't in Montreal, I think this would be a really good team for him to go to, especially with like Marty St. Louis being the coach. The fact that it's in Montreal and the fact that he's getting paid more than everybody else on the team and in 
like the fact that he has had mental health issues could not be a worse fit. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be scary. And it's if like, he performs really well and gets a lot of praise, maybe it becomes like the greatest fit for him. I just worry about like the second anything happens, if he falters that like shit just goes downhill quick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, dude, Montreal's building something here. Mm-hmm. Like they are really, again, like what we said with San Jose and stuff like that. It's like, they've been struggling a bit, but it's like the pieces they're putting in, it's not going to be overnight, but it's like, it's coming. And yeah. it, it's, if everything clicks out, which is how it's supposed to, I mean, this team is going to be good. Bring back Carey Price. I'm yeah. sure he fucking help out. Um, but yeah, like getting they're gonna have that full season of that with that Lane Hudson kid. He's, Dude, like, he's, he's gonna nasty. be sick. He's yeah. Gonna be, yeah, he's gonna be real good. Um, especially so the fucking Calder race this year is gonna be disgusting. <laughs> we thought it was gonna be good last year, which it was pretty good last year, but like Faber came out of nowhere, but we all knew it was Bedard. This upcoming year is gonna be one of those years where you're like it can be anybody. Yeah. And it might end up being somebody that nobody's even thinking about. Right. Yeah. You're thinking, you're thinking Mitch Koff. You're thinking Celebrini. Like you could throw in Will Smith. You can throw in Lane Hudson. You can fucking throw in so many guys. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, oh shit. Like this is gonna be sick. Dude, Frank Nazar fucking back to back fucking hawks, back to back calders. Like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, last like thing that talks about like trades. Um, today Kevin Wheats dropped a bomb, the forehead bomb that, oh, yeah. um, Asgaroff, or how do you say it? Askarov. Askarov has officially told the Predators that he will not be reporting to Milwaukee and he wants to be traded. Yes. Um, and I think we talked about this a little bit earlier, and I think that. For him, there's a little bit of misunderstanding. I think people are taking it as he wants to start right now. He wants to be a number one starter. I think he wants to be in a situation where his path to number one is more clear than it is in Nashville. Well, I mean, I think his path is clear in Nashville, and it's not for a long time. Well, I mean, like I should. I think what you're path. saying. I yeah, know what you're saying is his path is sooner. It, it's 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 a clear way to sooner. Yeah, yeah, number yeah. One. Right, yeah. So, I mean, you got UC Saros, who's a fucking stud. Oh, yeah. He's, he's Perennial like, Norris Trophy. Yeah. He's locked in for eight years. You know, you said it best. He's probably going to be not going to be coming down until probably six, year six, maybe yeah. at the earliest. So, I mean, that's six years of waiting around, hoping for, for this player just to fall off. It's, right. I don't, I don't and blame if him. If you're waiting six years and you're a backup, like, your contract is going to come up and then you're going to get paid not a starter salary. Like you're going to keep getting like low contracts until it's finally time to like take over. It's like, fuck that man. Like go get, go get your time on ice, go get fucking paid. And that's why it's like, that's why I threw out there that I, I still think the, I would love for Katie to make a, a play for him. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think he would, I, I It'd be a tough sell because I still think you'd have the same AHL route this year. Yeah. Unless you were to move like move a Mrazic in that situation or something. But but I think you can sell him like, hey, listen, our goalie competition is up for grabs right now. Like the guys in the in the NHL right now are just there to get us to the next stage. So like, you know, so for the, young, like this guys to develop and know that they're ready to go. You're right in line with that. I mean, he was drafted the same year as Camesso, right? Wasn't that the same yeah. draft? Year? Yeah. yeah. So he's like, he's right in line with what KD is trying to like drag out for a little bit. Yeah. And he went like, 11 and Camesso went 46. Can you imagine the two of them battling out for that one, a rule? Yeah. Oh, that would be fucking sick. Yeah, yeah. I, I get mean, why you could going. also try and maybe move one of our goalie prospects and like one because like you think about it, like Adam Gayen, his timeline is probably a little further pushed out. So if 
you know, if Nashville did want to like have somebody in the system still, you kind of maybe bring in some, bring somebody back. That's timeline is a little further out. So like somebody like him might be a good swap, but like, we'd probably, we would definitely have to add. And oh, then you, like you said, yeah. like a Camesso and Askarov, like fucking like who can, who wants to take it? Like, good luck. Like that'd be a great fucking like battle. Would you talk? I would toss that first round pick from Toronto. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, that just houses money there. Yeah, I don't. I would, I'd probably try and see if they would bite on like not a first rounder. Well, I mean, start low, but I mean, like, if it came to it and they were like, and that ends up being part of the package to go over there, I'd be like, okay, that's fine. Give them what? Give them one of the twenty twenty six second rounders. There's three of them. Yeah, right. Let's do that. Be yeah, it'd be interesting, and and I kind of really hope KD's kicking tires just to kind of see, like, hey, what, what you think, and what's what's his mindset on his timeline, like. Unless, unless I'm just misreading the situation, he truly is like, no, I deserve to be a starter right now. Like, yeah, which well, I find that hard to believe. I really do. Like, I mean, everybody thinks that they should be starting and in, in, in top line right away. You know, like that's just confidence in yourself. But realistically, it's like you can add the confidence, but at the end of the day, you know, hey, I still got X amount of years to to really go. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's probably not like a starter role, but like he he doesn't even have the backup role right now in Nashville. So like, even if that was the case to end up as a backup, I'm sure that'd be fine. And we don't even have that open right now either, but he doesn't really get to decide. Right. Yeah. Like, like, I guess he can still say like, I'm not going to go to the AHL team. And then you got to figure out what to do at that point. But I don't know who who really has a backup role open that doesn't have like a starter in place already. I don't think there's any teams. Fucking Montreal. <laughs> yeah, I, I, funny enough, I was just looking. I was like Montreal. I think I do something with their goaltending a little bit. I think that I mean it's funny because uh, on social media, it's seen on like Instagram, like a post about like prospects that people are excited for it of course like a bunch of montreal fans are throwing out some kid's name that's on that's in their system and i can't remember who it is let me see if i can find it um no nope i don't know (laughs) it's i i don't have (laughs) cat friendly to look these things up yeah Uh, so let me go to elite prospects and then see if i can find it there I'll, I'll know the name as soon as I see it too. But I don't. I don't even know if they. I don't even know if the kid's actually good or if it's just like that's their best goalie prospect, so they're pumping his tires. I mean, that's what fans want to do, right? Like they just want right. to be like my my prospects the best. And it's like yeah, like, no, take, take a seat, take a seat. <laughs> All right, here we go. Come on, goalies. I don't know. No clue. (laughs) (laughs) I'm pretty sure it was like a goal. Wait, it might be Connor Hughes. Is that it? Oh. That's one of another Hughes brother. (laughs) Nope, that kid's 27. There's no fucking way that's him. (laughs) Dude, I don't even know who he was talking about. Holy shit. All right, well, here, let's go with some quick hits here, and then we'll get to our uh, our left-handed defenseman ranking. Um, Toronto Maple Leafs do the classy thing and rip the C off of home, hometown kid John Tavares's chest and force him to pass it along, physically give it to Austin Matthews. Uh, on your face. Yeah. I mean, it's the move. It should have probably – it should have – been done already it should have happened before but of course austin matthews had to go and moon the the parking lady and in, in arizona and, and get in trouble for that so they had to postpone it a little bit um okay. yeah i mean the interesting that austin matthews is the first american-born captain of the toronto maple leafs okay yeah i guess that makes sense yeah so one fact um other one of the funnest other- facts 
Yeah. Other quick things. Uh, it looks like the Hughes brothers will be the cover athlete for NHL 25. There was a leaked trailer uh, showing the game off, and then the three of them were the were the center focus of it. Yeah. So unless it's a big smoke and mirror effect there, it's uh, it's probably going to be them. And as me and you said when we were watching earlier, it's like the the three headed dragon meme where yeah. it's like the two <laughs> headed dragons and Quinn Hughes and Jack Hughes, Jack Hughes. And then Luke Hughes is like the the the, the goofy tongue sticking the dopey out. one. Yeah, but it's and nothing against Luke. He just hasn't really done anything to be NHL cover athlete yet. Right. He wasn't like a first overall pick and one that has set it like a franchise record in points in New Jersey and he's not like a Norris trophy candidate or actually <laughs> Norris, Norris trophy winner like Quinn yet. He's he was a toss in for a Calder trophy nomination and that's about it so far. I even forgot he was holy shit. That's right. Yeah. And last but not least the the Lightnings are preparing to sell the team for a measly two billion dollars. Yeah, I forgot to mention during the about the captaincy being switched, hmm. um, but it gives me San Jose vibes so hard because they switched from Marlowe to Thornton and then from Thornton to Couture. And that team was just choke artists. Yeah. And it, nothing changed. They, they switched That's the true. captain three times or two times. Nothing changed. And then they, I mean, they finally made it to the final. And then, you know, we all know how that ended. Losers. Yeah. So it's just, it, I get the same vibe. It's like, oh, yeah, we're going to make a, a captaincy change. Okay. Like a first round exit sounds good. <laughs> like, nothing's going to be different. I'm still going to call a fucking game seven overtime loss <laughs> for fucking <laughs> Toronto round one. <laughs> It's, just, it's the same shit. It's just like different, a little bit different rapper. Oh, that's amazing. Um, all right. Yeah. Anything else? No. All right. Let's go, let's go to our ranking here. So yes, man. spin yes. that wheel. Four, six, seven, eight, or nine. And again, this is our rankings. This is nothing to do <laughs> with stats or what people think. It's only what we think. Six. Thank God, because this was tough, man. Oh, really? All right. I mean, All I right. had I had ten written down, but like yeah, not many of those were confident picks. Oh, really? Um, so right. you you start this time. So we're starting at six. Um, I am going to go. Let's go Stanley Cup champion. Fours lane. Okay. Okay. And my six, I'm going to go Rasmus Dahling. Oh, I was thinking about that. Because he's, he's pretty fucking good. He's awesome. <laughs> All right. Number five. I, you know what? I'm going to go Dahling. Okay. I'm going uh, down to Florida like you, except for Victor Hedman. Victor Hedman, yeah. Number four, let's stick with um, – let's throw a little uh, hometown bias in here. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing Kevin Korczynski at number four. That's my, that's my four? <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Holy shit. Oh, damn it. Just, he's, he's, he, it's like he just has four vibes, man. Like, I like him, and I know he's going to get better, but he wasn't, like, as good as I, I would like him to be. But he was also only 19. So, like, right. I know uh, he, he's got potential to, to be real good. Number three, Heskinen. Ah, Heis Miro Heskinen? Heskinen. I got, uh, for my three, I got Zach Wawrenski. Good old, good old eight mile. <laughs> All right, number two. I'm keeping my bias here. Hometown bias going Vela uh Alex Velasic. Ah, okay. 
I'm going to trust me a lot this past season. I was like, holy yeah, shit, he's good. Yeah, I can't wait to see him this upcoming year. Uh, I'm going to go Roman Yossi. Yossi. That's C. Yeah. I was thinking, do I want to go Yossi? But I, I couldn't put two divisional rivals in the top three. Oh, okay. I don't even know. Um, who, can, who, who do you have one? Well, no, number three was... Oh. That's... Who was it? Oh, Heiskin. 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 Okay. Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I couldn't put him in top three. So number one, I'm going Mr. Cover Athlete himself, Quinn Hughes. Oh, wow. Uh, my number one is actually Alex Vlasic. Is it really? Yeah. Because <laughs> he's fucking aw- – dude, he's awesome. I, mean, I just get so excited. He's got such Seabrook vibes about him. Just wow, making me feel stupid guy. for taking him too. You <laughs> dick. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> shit happens. Uh, who are your honorable mentions? So honorable mentions on my list too. I had Yossi. I had Hedman. I had Luke Hughes. Oh, okay. I do like him. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be solid. Like, um, and then the last one was Sergachev. Oh, wow. I have, uh, I had Forsling on there. I had Heiskanen on there. And then I had, uh, K. Andre Miller. Keanu, oh yeah, and then uh, Calvin DeHaan. I hit him too, and I actually deleted him <laughs> off my list. <laughs> yeah, just I just really liked Calvin DeHaan, <laughs> dude. He was the fucking man. Yeah, he blocked every fucking shot, hit every fucking buddy, and then he had that really great <laughs> tweet. <laughs> it was just oh, oh, like getting traded from Carolina to Chicago, and then. Oh, I really like Calvin DeHaan. I wish you'd come back. It was like, not going to happen. <laughs> He's fucking back to Carolina. Response to the tweet. Eh, I guess I was wrong. It's like, I can't. I wish I knew it. Was. Oh, my God. It was just so good. It was awesome. Um, all right. Do you have your three dislikes? Absolutely. All right. Number three. Am I going first now? Yes. Uh, number three. It's funny because. I'm probably going to end up liking him now, but Alec Martinez. Alec Martinez? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, he ended the Hawks playoff push in 2014, and then he ended up winning a cup with Vegas. I'm just like, fuck that guy. But now he's on our team, and I'm like, all right. Well, okay. it's funny. It's funny you brought that up about him ruining the Hawks place in uh, 2014 because my number three is Nick Letty because of the <laughs> <laughs> Because of the same thing, the because same play. Stupid <laughs> back. Yeah, that's holy. That's so funny, dude. That that play got him traded. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Ugh. All right, number All right. two. Number two, Caleb Jones. Caleb Jones. Okay. Just how frustrating that kid was. He's just trying so hard to be Seth Jones. <laughs> it was just frustrating as hell. And what's so funny about this list is that I'm not even like, uh, this isn't even me trying to match you. My number two is Zach Jones. Whoa. You know why? No. Because his name, he spells his name stupid with Z A C. Just Z A C. Oh my God. I was, I, that was the only thing I could think of <laughs> when you said, do you know why? I'm like, I don't even know how it fucking plays. <laughs> Probably his name is spelled fucking stupidly. <laughs> All oh, right, number one. Shit. I think we might have the same number one, but let's see. Tori Krug. Oh, no, we don't have the same number one. <laughs> that's who I got, number one, Tori Krug. My number one, Darnell Nurse. You know why? Oh. Because he's Canadian, <laughs> Seth Jones. Because <laughs> he's Canadian, Seth Jones. Yeah, dude. I didn't – yeah, I completely forgot about Darnell Nurse. I don't give a shit about Darnell Nurse. He's not that good. It's like it's he, no, he just makes – the reason, too, it's like every time you fucking hear anybody talking shit about Darnell Nurse and they're like, oh, yeah, well, Seth Jones is like in the same category as him. It's like, fuck, Darnell, be better so people stop reminding us that we have fucking Seth Jones on the contract we do. Yeah, well, yeah, dude. That was, that was the one thing that's so funny is that like – Stan Bowman set the market price for a defenseman during that offseason. And so that's why they both ended up being over $9 million yeah. defensemen. 
and neither of them are like really worth that much. And like it's so funny that like now Stan Bowman is the GM of his team. So essentially, right. he gets his he gets his Seth Jones deal that he wanted from the entire time. Yeah, he does. He <laughs> he gets his own Seth Jones. Holy shit! Darnell Nurse was in 2013 draft. Oh my god! Guess who's in that draft? Seth Jones. <laughs> Oh yeah, Seth Jones, the the slam dunk, or what was the T, the the hockey news prospect like magazine? Oh. Seth Jones, the yeah. slam dunk choice for first overall, proceeds yeah. to drop to fourth or third. Yeah, and then Nate McKinnon is the best player by far. Oh, yeah. And then Alexander Barkov, second best player by far. <laughs> yeah, fucking hilarious. Um, all right, episode two eighty six. What do you want to call it? Uh, it's, um, offer sheeted. Offer sheeted. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's the left, def- left-handed defenseman, left-handed defenseman, not just left defense because they switch sides sometimes. So left-handed defenseman. Uh, and then next week will be right-handed defenseman. And then we stop because there's no other positions that matter. That's horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> That is such <laughs> I feel like the the goalie one would be like the easiest one to find three goalies that you hate. You can probably find sixteen that you hate. Oh my god, we should switch it up and do three <laughs> we like and do like spin the wheel for who we don't like. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Or oh, should we do that for the goalie episode? I uh, spin the whatever the wheel spins. You pick the number you like. I pick the number I don't like. Oh wow. <laughs> I don't no. know. I like no. goalies. I do. I do like goalies. Yeah, they're fun. They're just overpaid and irrelevant for what they need. Fucking talk about overpaid. We're literally just talking about Seth Jones and Darnell <laughs> Nurse. <laughs> Fucking get out of here. <laughs> All right. Make sure to check us out on your favorite podcast feed, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, the big two. But we are on all major podcast feeds, uh, YouTube. Uh, social media at WCB Podcast, and we will uh, see you in the next one. All right. Love you, boys. Bye. Thanks for listening to the WCB Podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you heard this podcast. To connect with Jerem and Tanner, check out the boys at WCB Podcast on all social media. We'll see you next time.